The iArcade is here, and after spending a couple of days with it, I'm ready to review. But here's the thing. Reviewing this has the same limitations as reviewing the new Xbox. The truth is, time will tell on a platform like this. How will the available games library change over time? If this sells well, there's little question in my mind that iArcade will deliver a vast list of games, considering the impressive list they've been able to offer already before they even launch the product. But this is not a self-contained product like Arcade went up and it's not user expandable like the Legends Ultimate. So the real story of iArcade is yet to be written. Welcome back to Unqualified Critics where we cover home arcade gaming. And I want to thank iArcade and Jong specifically, their CEO and founder, for sending a review unit. But this is a review unit that I personally get to review and this review is not being vetted. This isn't a paid placement so I am going to be completely honest with you about what I think of the iArcade. I now see home arcade products in one of two categories. One, the nostalgia offerings, most clearly represented by Arcade One Up. And then there's the value offerings, best represented to date by At Games. Value means a cabinet where you can play a lot of games, you get really high quality specs. I see a lot of love online for At Games lately and it is well deserved. But there is a reason Arcade One Up is moving toward 2 million cabinets sold while everyone else is in the double digit thousands or less. Nostalgia is not practical, it's emotional and it sells, and it sells like crazy. At Games has some appeal to nostalgia as evidenced by their pinball being redesigned to look more like a real pinball machine, and their games imagery on the side panels of the Legends Ultimate. But it is not a mimic or copy of any real cabinet, so ultimately you're buying it for the value. You get a lot of the games to play, you get higher quality components. My point with all of this is that the IR Arcade is actually kind of a radical design. There is almost no nostalgia component to the design of the cabinet itself. Now they have the Dragon's Lair and the Double Dragon variant, but if you look at the base marquee cabinet, you're not getting a sense of nostalgia, you're getting instead a sense of performance. It's got a glossy finish, a large monitor, imposing speakers. It actually looks fantastic in person and more on that later, but it is not nostalgic in any way. Everything here is designed around performance first. The marquee itself is recessed. Instead of jutting out, this allows for a clear view of the large monitor and forward, instead of downward facing, audio for the best sound. There's no retro artwork on the screen's bezel, nothing to distract from that high performance 19 inch monitor and the real star, the games. Now let's talk more about that design. The design and engineering team for this cabinet deserve a medal. It is very polished. Assembling it reveals the greatest attention to detail. Here's an example. There are large rubber feet on the bottom of the cabinet. They slot into pre-created holes in the cabinet base so that they don't need to be removed and put back on later. To use it in a stand-up format, it stays complete. That pedestal or base has vent openings on the back of the cabinet. Now, why do they need that if there's not going to be any heat? Because there's not actually any electronic device inside the pedestal. Well, it makes the overall cabinet look like a cohesive, unified piece from all angles. And in fact, the power cord from the bar top can be routed out the back of the bar top if you're actually putting it on a bar or a table, or it can be routed downward through the pedestal. Again, lending itself to a cohesive look. It looks good from all angles as opposed to arcade one ups, which look bad from behind and whose risers don't actually look particularly integrated with the cabinet itself. I know it's a design we've all accepted. It's kind of at this point an iconic design, but it's not a great design. 
The I Arcade pedestal and bar top combination is a very great design. Assembly does take some time, but it's basically foolproof. And given the type of screw and socket design used here, the whole thing fits together very solidly and without many exposed screws, making it look like it came pre-assembled. I was actually surprised to see this came flat packed, similar to Arcade One Up, because in photos, it looks like it came pre-assembled as the MVSX did from Unico. There are very few screws exposed because of that socket design, which will make sense to you when you put this together. But the screws that are exposed actually look really nice with the chrome finish and particularly these side screws that connect the control panel to the side panels. They are exposed, but they're sunk into an opening flanked by accent color. So it's a small detail, but really premium. When you look closely, this thing shines. In place of T-molding, you get accent tape on the bar top unit, and this is the weak point of the design, which is a shame because the chrome molding, for example, from At Games would have looked awesome here, but with everything else being so premium, I imagine they had to cut costs somewhere. If I didn't know better, I'd say that was a SCART cable, but I don't think it is. I didn't think SCART cables were in use anymore, so I'm gonna have to ask them what they use for video. More importantly, there is an HDMI out. So if you wanna get video capture off this bad boy, you're able to do it. Let's talk about specs because this is what make it possible to play these 3D games. And you guys know I'm not that interested in playing modern 3D phone type games on an arcade, but I am interested in modern games made in an old school format. Think about games like Streets of Rage 4, which could never run on any arcade one up or at games chip that we've seen. Well, it could run presumably with some tweaking on the IRK. Now that's not a game that's been announced for, but a game that has is called Retromania Wrestling, a game from a studio that specializes in new games with an old school feel. That's where I think we can get some evergreen content, some actual new games that are gonna scratch that nostalgia itch but maybe have some new updated gameplay mechanics. That's coming to iArcade when it releases, and you can thank this higher end chipset. So what exactly is under the hood? Well, we know we get a pretty high resolution monitor, 1280 by 1024. Not gonna matter if you're playing the old games, but if you're playing new games, it absolutely will matter. We get that 100 watts of stereo amplified sound. The chipset is basically a mid-range smartphone, 1.8 gigahertz, six core processor, and an 800 megahertz, four core GPU. For RAM, we get four gigabytes of LPDDR4X, basically just RAM from 2018 that's designed for a smartphone. 64 gigs of storage, which I think is probably plenty, but if you're worried about that, you can pay for the 128 gigs. And speaking of that operating system, it is an Android variant. It looks like they forked Android and customized it. They claim it's optimized for gaming. I don't know what exactly, to what extent that is, but it's not just running Android on an arcade. They did go out of their way to create at least their own skin and they're saying their own optimizations under the hood. The dimensions of this cabinet are interesting. It's basically tall and narrow. 40 and a half inches is how high the control panel sits, but it is only 20 inches wide. Now to put that in perspective, the At Games Legends Ultimate is 35 and a half inches tall. So this is a whole extra five inches of height, but then width wise, it's 29 and a half inches wide, whereas this is only 20 wide. Now I will test this later for two player comfort, but for one player, I found it very comfortable. The standing height was nice. The monitor is much closer to eye level than I'm used to with the Home Arcade product, which I think is the reason everything is elevated as high as it is. The unit itself has a separate coin and start button. Thank you for providing that iArcade. I've long felt Arcade One Up should have this. I'd like to see everybody do this. I don't know why they don't. I'd prefer the coin button to be on the front lip of the control panel, but I'm just glad we got one here. And it really makes starting and activating on a game nice and seamless. Speaking of games, how are the games that are actually included in the cabinet? Well, there is nice variety here, but for the price, $750, I'd like to see more than 11 games here. I'd like to see higher profile retro games included. Now, of course, the games list ultimately is up to you because you'll be able to go and buy your own games. And a starting list of curated games is never gonna satisfy everybody. 
But I do think there's room here for more variety and quantity of retro games because I think, and I, you know, I could be wrong on this, but I think the majority of gameplay people are going to actually activate on with the iArcade is going to be retro gaming. If that's true, I think that initial games list should reflect that. I don't mind having some new games sprinkled in here, but we ought to be getting more than 11 overall in any event for $750. But as for the game store, well, it's not directly accessible from within the iArcade. Currently, it's only available on Android and on the web through a browser. It is coming to iOS soon. Now, I don't have an Android device, so I can only test on the web store. Buying and downloading to the arcade is as seamless as possible, to be fair. You're asked for your credit card info without ever leaving the store page. The info you enter auto saves, and the game instantly is transported to your cabinet and downloaded. Now, this cabinet has Wi-Fi 5, a much better Wi-Fi clearly antenna than at least the arcade one ups, and probably also than the Legends Ultimate. My performance on here is incredible. The, now I have good Wi-Fi in my house, but the, any download I've thrown on it has been instant, including the store update. I've been very impressed with the Wi-Fi. All that's to say, it's almost like these guys at IRK know they're asking you to take a second step of going outside to add the games. So they wanted to make it as seamless as possible. But I do hope we get store access directly in the arcade at some point. It's something so obvious that I can only assume there's a technical reason for launching without it. In my opinion, this platform will live or die based on what's called an attachment rate. That's just industry jargon for the number of additional games sold per console, or in this case, arcade. Attachment rate has never mattered before. You've never heard me mention it before because on any other home arcade I've ever covered, it's not been a factor. But at iArcade, it revolves around a game store where you are expected to buy and download games you've selected. It matters here a ton. When it comes to game pricing, I've said before that games sold for an arcade format should be and, and can be priced at a premium over console or mobile, and I do believe that. Now, I did cross-reference pricing on a few games in their store that are available elsewhere. For example, Riptide GP Renegade. It's $10 on PC or console. It is $13 here. I think that's reasonable. Matt Mania, an old-school wrestling game from the 80s, is $7.99 on PS4. I think the only other platform it's available on commercially, and it's $7.99 here at the iArcade, which I I think is a good price but this is a multi-cade and i think it only makes sense to invest this level of seven eight hundred dollars for the cabinet if you intend to add a lot of games why buy this to just play a couple games it also doesn't have the artwork for any one game so again this is only going to make sense for you if you're going to be adding quite a few games for this reason i'd like to see it made easier to bulk up this games list maybe game packs that are available at a discounted per game cost but you get 10 or 20 at a time you pay a little bit less per game or more games included out of the box or maybe some free game drops that they do occasionally not unlike what at games did for owners when we got that taito uh, 47 or 50 whatever the number was a game pack that we all got for free overall per game pricing is reasonable in my opinion but we need a little bit lower cost of entry to add let's say 20 or 30 or 50 games because if you go and do that man you're going to be in for a lot of money on this machine, which I'm sure is iArcade's premise and that's what they want. But I think there is a happy middle ground here. When it comes to audio, the stereo system is indeed loud. Just look at that audio board heat sink, good God. I found myself though playing this on low volume, almost the lowest volume it'll go for the most part. Now let's be honest, 70s, 80s, and most even 90s arcade games had lo-fi audio. So I do think this speaker setup is actually overkill for anything but the most modern games. And I'm not really interested in the modern games, so it seems a little bit like overkill, but audio does remain a strong suit in a world where every other home arcade that's out there that you can buy commercially has really crappy audio, let's be serious. And it's kind of good enough for these older arcade titles, but when it comes to the iArcade, they're taking it to the next step. Do I think they needed to go this far? No, I don't, but I'm glad they did. It's kind of cool. It reminds me of the old school 90s shelf systems you'd get that'd be crazy and over the top, but you loved them anyway. Now, when it comes to making sense of all the different versions of the iArcade, here's my perspective. If you're gonna buy this, I recommend either getting the bar top by itself, if that's what you want as a bar top unit. This certainly is a really imposing and impressive bar top unit. Or if you're gonna go for the stand-up variant you want one of those sanwa editions you only pay fifty dollars more over buying the bar top and pedestal base units separately you get an extra 64 gigabytes of storage and upgraded controls from sanwa 
I think that both of those options are good. That said, I think if you buy the bar top and the pedestal separate, you're paying $750. That's a little steep to me, given that you're still in the clone control space. 64 gigabytes probably is enough. That's a lot of retro games. I don't know that you actually need the extra storage, but again, for an extra $50 bump up, you're getting quite a bit more for your money by going for one of those premium Sanwa versions. As promised, I did test this out with two people, and I'll tell you, playing with my girlfriend, it was perfectly comfortable. If I were playing this with a buddy, I probably would want just a little bit more space. That control panel at 20 inches wide, it makes a compact and pretty good looking figure. But if you plan to play this a lot with your buddies, you're going to want this to be a little bit wider. All right, final thoughts. Overall, who do I think this cabinet is for and is it worth it for those people? Well, as I've alluded to earlier, I think this is for the individual that wants a high performance cabinet and is ready to spend money on adding games to it. And they have particular games they're going to want to add to it. They don't necessarily want the kitchen sink approach of the act games. They want a tailored games list, they want to be able to pick and choose, but that they want a premium cabinet above all. For that individual, yes, I do think that this is worth it. For someone who's more of a nostalgia buyer, they have a couple old school games that they love that they really want to play. For that person, you're going to have to think twice about this. What do you guys think? Is it nostalgia or is it having a lot of different games to play and a high quality gameplay experience your primary driver for buying these arcades? Would you pay for games individually if it meant a hi-fi cabinet and jump into the IRK to do all of that relative to at games approach? Or would you rather buy the at games, deal with the complexity, but have the ability to play a lot of different games out of the box? Which one do you think makes the most sense? Let me know in the comments. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Really appreciate it. If you enjoyed this, stay tuned for more news and reviews on Home Arcade. Hit that subscribe button, enable notifications. And if you enjoyed the video, hit the like button. It really does matter. It's basically currency on YouTube. Thanks, guys. I'll talk to you soon. Hey, consider hitting that join button to support the channel. And thanks so much for watching.